We're now at this special event, Let's Make History event, uh, to support Glenn Costu, who's running for uh, the Congress. How are you tonight? I'm doing great, thank you, and thanks for being here at this event. It's exciting, we're just getting started, there's just anticipated to be tons of people here, and it's exciting to run for U.S. Congress and see all of the great support from the community. So tell us about your campaign in general. Our campaign is going well. We've been running strong, and I've been a state representative. I'm running for United States Congress to bring that conservative change to Congress, to make sure that our systems are working well, that America's put first, that jobs are here in the United States and not in other places, that we fix our immigration system so people come here the legal way. I know so many people are waiting, but the system gets bogged down with people that continue to cross through the border illegally, so we have to fix our system. We have to make sure that we are protecting our Constitution that gives us freedom and liberty, religious freedom, the freedom of speech, the freedom to get together like this, and our Tenth Amendment which says the federal government, Washington DC is too big, let's give the states their rights and their that be able to have their support. So we look at this, we want to have a vision of lower taxes, of more jobs, communities that are growing, dealing with health care to be affordable, making sure that people that are dying from opioids get help and stop overdosing and fixing our mental health system. These are the things that so many people have said, yes, that is the type of congressman I want and I'm there to support their issues and support the people. And we call this the Lex Let's Make History event because as you know, I've been the first Chaldean to be elected in Michigan House of Representatives and let's make history and let's get a Chaldean elected to Washington. Whether you're Chaldean or not, being a part of history is something that we can all cherish and that we can all appreciate, especially with a cultural identity. Thank you so much, uh, Clint. And um, we all support you, MEA support you, uh, and we wish you good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. And don't forget the election is August 7th. So if you're here in Michigan, August 7th, our primary elections, let's get out, let's make history, let's take conservative change to Washington, and thank you so much. Thank you. We're now with Derek Dehu. Uh, he's an active member in the community, and uh, you're supporting uh, the campaign for uh, Clint. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the campaign in general. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, first of all, thank you so much for METV and radio being here and covering the event. This is a wonderful opportunity for the community to rally behind Clint and make a historic run for uh, con Congress. Really, it, it's important to have representation in D.C., and it doesn't matter if you live in uh, Michigan, California, Arizona, Chicago, having a member of our community represent us in D.C. and our interests, as well as the interests of those that live in the 11th District, it's exciting. And Clint's got such a tremendous pedigree and background, and uh, you know we're excited to help him. He's the right candidate at the right time. And if ever there was a chance to get someone from our community that was qualified with his background uh, into this position, this is it couldn't be a better time. So, um, how important it to uh, support someone from our community? Yeah, I think it's important to support those in our community that are first qualified and have de demonstrated leadership qualities and the ability to do the job. And Clint has certainly proven that. For the last six years, he's represented our community with honor and dignity uh, in Lansing and really elevated our position within the state. For example, people in the up north region or people in northern Michigan, they now know who Chaldeans are. Uh, a lot of that has to do with Clint's work uh, in the legislature. And um, for example, like a month and a half ago, uh, we were there with the Chaldean American Chamber of Commerce for Legislative Day at the Capitol. And Clint actually said a prayer uh, in Aramaic and it was nice to hear that it was wonderful and uh, you know you get to hear other members of the legislature hear what he has to say and um, I think there was about 50 new citizens that had just been sworn in and they participated in that day and Clint said to them in Surath he said you know, isn't it exciting that you could come to this country and just work hard and have opportunities to do anything you want so it was a very touching moment for people that were in the room and uh, it's, it's exciting to see where we can go from here Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you for uh, supporting this campaign. It's a pleasure, and thank you for, for the interview. Keep up the great work yourself. We're now with Jeff and John Kalabat, active members in the community. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so uh, tell us about uh, the campaign of uh, Clint and uh, your support for Clint and why it's important to support someone uh, from our community. 
Well, I've known Clint for many, many years, and Clint portrays, I think, the values that we are very interested in as conservatives, and I believe in him and I believe in what he believes in. So it's very important, I think, that on election day that people vote for Clint, because I think that if they're especially interested in conservative values, he's the person for this job. Well, he said it all. I mean, uh, I, I've, I've known Clint for a while, and uh, I'm uh, a true conservative, and I am obviously a supporter of a conservative uh, a person who's, who's going, going up against uh, the guys on the other side. So, yeah, I'm here for Clint, 100%. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being here and support this campaign. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you as well. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start our program. It'll last just a few minutes, so if I could just have your attention for just a few moments. My name is Derek Dickow, and I'm honored to be your MC tonight and to welcome you to Regency Manor. On behalf of the committee to elect Clint Kesto for United States Congress, we want to thank you all for your support and for coming out tonight. Specifically, we want to thank uh, Regency Manor and the Nature family for opening up their doors and serving the food. Let's give them a round of applause. There are several community leaders here from several organizations, so we would like to recognize them, those from the uh, Arab and Chaldean Council, the Chaldean American Bar Association, the Chaldean American Association of Health Professionals, the Chaldean American Ladies of Charity, Chaldean American Chamber of Commerce, and the Chaldean Community Foundation. If we could have a round of applause for all those representing those different organizations, wonderful organizations from our community. We would like to recognize the media that's present this evening, uh, the Chaldean Voice, the Chaldean News, MEA TV and Radio for broadcasting, and then uh, the John Orm Radio Show. So thank you all for the media for coming out today. Appreciate it. And to run a, a, a congressional campaign, you need to have a lot of volunteers, and there's so many of them in the room tonight. So if you guys could, those of you that are volunteering for the campaign, just put your hands up so that people can see who you are. We want to say thank you for all your hard work and effort. Uh, these are the people that are knocking on doors and putting up lawn signs, and they also have absentee ballots. Uh, Maria in the back, if you could just wave your hand. She wants to see you to fill out an absentee in case you can't make it to the polls on August 7th. So please visit Medj and uh, and Maria uh, for the absentee balance. I would like to recognize also uh, a few people that are donating their services tonight, specifically uh, Madeline Grace Photography. Madeline, where are you at? Right over here, thank you very much. And of course, uh, DJ Brandon Thajbu uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the music. So we appreciate all the support and effort. Uh, and at this time, it's my honor to bring up to the stage uh, Bishop Ibrahim Ibrahim for a quick blessing and invocation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the bishop. Please be seated. Thank you very much. It is always good to be together. And it is always good to support each other. We are here to show our love to our beloved Clint, who is running for Congress. It will be great honor for the, all the Eastern and mainly the Chaldeans that one member of the community is running for the Congress of the United States. We are not many here, but I guess each one will represent 100 and more than 100, and you will uh, do the campaign like he did uh, two years ago and four years ago. Go to door to door, and especially that uh, absent uh, ballot. It is very important because the people, especially the old people, they they don't go to vote. So it is better to prepare that. We ask God to bless our Clint. And we hope, even if it is first time, but we hope he will win, really. If he will win on August 7, I am sure he will win on November. So the main thing is to do now, for August 7. And then the November will be easier. So we wish you and we ask God to
to bless you, Clint, and to give you the power and to give you the strength to serve others. Not only the Chaldeans, no, others. All the people of you represent them in the future. And especially if they are district of commerce, Farmington, West Bloomfield, Birmingham, those are full of Chaldeans and other uh, Eastern foreigners. So I think if you do those supporters, if you do a good job, we will reach good results. So we ask God to bless Clint first and all of you to do this kind of work which is good. Mr. Kosto, we wish you all the best and we hope uh, you will win. That's all what we can do. We will try to support you, but you will win. Don't think that Clint gave me money, I came here. <laughs> no, not even because we are a little bit related, no. But only you know me very well. I support our people who run for any public function, anyone. But it has to be within the, the line of the church too. I cannot go support Democrats because they have some position. They have some position, we cannot agree with them. So we will not support them. But we don't go against. We don't support them. But Clint, we support you all the way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop, very much. And I uh, just wanted to reinforce that those of you that have never filled out an absentee ballot before, Maria and Medj will help you fill it out. It's the easiest way to vote, and you can do so in the privacy of your own home. Uh, at this time, I would like to invite Sholte Thanja from the Chaldean Voice. Sholte, coincidentally, about a month ago, Clinton and I traveled west to San Diego. Sholte was there as well, and, and the overwhelming support we received from the community out there really couldn't be possible without leaders like Sholte helping us out. So Sholte, if you could say a few words. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Before I start, I want to make sure I didn't get paid by Clint. He's not related to me either. Actually, he got my money. I met Clint years and years ago when he first got involved in politics. And since then, I don't know how many times I've interviewed Clint in the Chaldean voice. But I remember the first, first time. He was sitting in my studio thinking he wants to reach out to the Chaldean community running for Lansing, I asked him in Chaldean the first question. His response immediately was in English. Okay, Clint. <laughs> Second question, in Chaldean too, he responded in English. Today, when I ask him in English, he responds in Chaldean. <laughs> So Clint, what we're looking forward now is a session or two in D.C. in Aramaic or Chaldean. Yeah. As we were gathered here this evening to support Clint, I just want to assure you, we are very much involved in the community and the challenges today in D.C. for our great nation here and for our own community, they are greater today than yesterday. We have the issue of Iran in the Middle East, the issue of Hezbollah, and we have also Daesh. If we think they are gone, they are not. We all witnessed what happened yesterday in Erbil. Our community, the challenges we have today from the issue of detainees to the thousands of families, refugees in Turkey, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Jordan, and the displaced people internally in Iraq. Rebuilding our towns and villages destroyed by the ISIS. These are all challenges. In order to uh, stand up to all these challenges, we need a great fighter. And he's right next to me right here. 
So we look forward to see you in DC, Clint, and to fight for our rights, fight for this country, and be up to the challenges. And you have our support. I'm not in your district, but I'm here. We all have to come collectively together to support you and see you in DC, and we will come and visit you there. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. You know, Clint has done a fantastic job representing our community locally in the state over the last six years. He's done so with honor and integrity and morals. A little bit about his background, if you haven't met him or don't know a little bit about him. He went to Brother Rice High School locally here. Then he went to the University of Michigan where he helped to revive the Chaldean American Student Association and was involved in, in many community-wide events. Then he went to Wayne State Law School and then became an assistant prosecutor in Wayne County. And during that time, he was a volunteer in the Mother of God Parish Council, and he saw a void in Lansing with representation of our community. He'll take that same type of energy and leadership to the uh, United States Congress. It's, it's now a common sentiment that we hear that if you want to win an election in this state or even in our country, you really have to come through the doors of the Chaldean communities because of his leadership and his efforts. That, uh, that we're positioned that way. We have more than 30,000 registered voters in the 11th district. I, Bishop cited some of the cities. I mean, it's Northern Wayne County. It goes all the way to South Lyon, Commerce, and it comes around and goes all the way to Troy. So if we get out to vote as a community, we will make history and we will send the first Chaldean to United States Congress. We couldn't send a better guy, a more qualified candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the stage the first Chaldean Congressman, ladies and gentlemen, Clint Castell. Thank you, Derek, and thank you uh, to the Nadra family and Regency Manor for opening up your doors here today for all of us, and to all of you, thank you, and to the community leaders that passed out uh, the event flyer to bring everyone together, and that's what it's really about, bringing everyone together, and I called Bishop Ibrahim, actually, the first person I called in 2012 before I ran for office was Bishop Ibrahim. I said, what, should, what do you think I should do? He says, well, you know, I wish you the best and we'll pray for you. And then we made history in 2012 and ran again in 14 and 16 and one and one. And here we are in 2018. So I said, we have to call Bishop Ibrahim to be here. Uh, even though he's retired, we're gonna get him out of retirement, at least for a few minutes. So we thank you, Bishop Ibrahim, for your blessing. And to, all, to everyone that's here, to the, to the family, my family, my wonderful wife, Delina, my two little kids are probably running around, screaming or eating, but they're quiet right now. So, uh, eating, they're eating, that's why they're quiet, right? But and to, when we talk about family and, and our children, that's the real reason why we're running here today. It's 2018, we have who knows what is going on in Washington. Our political structure is a mess, but we still have our families that are here and our children that will be growing up and our grandchildren that will be growing up. So what, are, what is America going to be for our future? What is it going to be for our children? What about our community, our, even our ethnic, our Chaldean community? We're here, we're Americans, but it's a melting pot here, and we have also an identity. As Americans, we still go to our Chaldean church. We still speak Aramaic, Chaldean. What about our prosperity as business owners and having a culture of being entrepreneurs? We were entrepreneurs then, we're entrepreneurs here in the United States. So what shape and form is our country going to be? Well, that's why I'm running for office to take that conservative change, to take those conservative values, those religious beliefs that we have, and say we are going to keep them here in the United States. We are here as Americans, we're here as Christians, and we're going to bring that conservative change to Washington. I look around and so many of us are immigrants, our families are immigrants. I was fortunate to be born here to, to parents that immigrated here, my mother and father who are here. But we believe in life and liberty, the pursuit of happiness, all of the glories that our country here, the United States, offers. But they came here, and all of you came here the right way. And there are so many that are waiting in line. They're waiting in line months and months and months to come to our great country. But our focus is on people that are coming here illegally. 
We have to figure out how we could secure our borders, how we should build that wall, but how also we should encourage immigration coming in the legal way. Many of the refugees are stranded in other countries, but they were displaced because of their Christian values. Maybe we should make that a priority, to bring those refugees here where we have freedom, where we have religious freedom, and where we do protect life. And that religious freedom is here, and we have to make sure we protect it, and it's protected in our Constitution, our God-given rights. We'll be protecting life, whether they be the smallest, inside the mother's womb, or even as they get older, our seniors, we have to make sure that we as a country have those conservative values that say we will protect life, but also we will protect those that are seniors that want to work. We shouldn't be reaching into their pocket continuously, but we should let them continue to live a beautiful life here in the United States. And I know we spoke about uh, some of the issues that affect the Chaldean community and those that will be deported. Yes, you come here to the United States, it's a privilege. And you should cherish that privilege and not commit a crime. But just as we protect life, we should not send people back to the death penalty of ISIS in Iraq. And we should make sure that, that we eliminate ISIS, in fact. And we have religious freedom spread throughout the world. That's why we have to protect those individuals as well. We have to crush ISIS. We have to make sure our foreign policy is strong. We have to make sure that North Korea doesn't have nuclear weapons, that Iran does not have nuclear weapons, that there is peace in the Middle East, but also that there is protection for people. And we have to do that, why? So that we can have a stronger America too. A stronger America means better jobs here, more income here, more prosperity here, so that the Ford plant that was going to build its company and its manufacturing in Mexico is now here in Michigan. That is the type of leadership and conservative values that we all need. And you may be thinking, well, that's great, but Clint, what have you done to show that? Well, I've shown a lot of solutions. Being in the house for six years, we've been able to accomplish a lot for making sure that people's privacy rights are protected through asset forfeiture reforms. To then looking at our healthcare system and saying, wait, people are dying because of opioid abuse. There's a broken mental health system. And all of it is pushing these people into our correction system. Well, let's stop having our children die from opioids. Let's fix our broken mental health system so that they can have relief rather than being thrown in prison. And let's be s smart on crime and soft on our taxpayers. And we put in legislation and we've accomplished that. We looked at our children, all of our precious children, and what happened with that monster, Larry Nasser, and abusing our children. Well, I worked to increase our standards to protect our children from sexual assault and sexual abuse. These are proud moments that we could say, we've accomplished something to make our state better. So let's not stop there. Let's continue and make our country better. Let's make it better for our families. Let's make it better for our children and our grandchildren. So what is it going to take to win? All of you being here. Bishop Ibrahim's prayers, your prayers. I need you to vote. We're gonna make sure every one of you votes. But you all have contacts in your phones. And you know people that live in Troy and Birmingham and Bloomfield and Waterford and White Lake and Novi and Commerce and Milford and Wixom and Wall Lake and West Bloomfield and South Lyon and Northville and Plymouth and Canton and Livonia. And in those areas, if you can each get 100 people out, 50 people out to vote, then there's enough of us to win. There's enough people that believe in the conservative change that we need in Congress. There's enough to make history. So let's make history in two weeks on August 7th. And then like Bishop, the Bishop said, we'll make history again in November. And then we'll make history when we get sworn into office in January. Because this isn't me, it's we. This isn't just for one person, but for all of us, for all of our children. So let's do it. Let's make history. Thank you. God bless you. God bless our country. And let's go get them in two weeks. Thank you.